Hey everyone, in today's video, I am sharing some tips and ideas for teaching students all about the relationship between addition and subtraction. There are quite a few models for teaching this relationship that we often use in first and second grade, but I do have some tips on how to make these models a little bit more effective when using them with your students. So if you're ready to hear these tips, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Alright, kicking us off, in first and second grade we definitely teach our students how to add and we teach them how to subtract and in many cases we either explicitly or non-explicitly teach our students about the relationship that these operations have with one another. And your first tip is that if you don't explicitly teach the relationship they have, it's time to start. We want our students to know that addition and subtraction are inverse operations. They don't necessarily need to know the term inverse operations yet, but what they do need to understand and recognize is that addition can undo subtraction and subtraction can undo addition. For example, if I have, you know, three items and I have four more and then I'm like, wait, this is too many. No worries, I can simply undo that by taking away those four and I'm back to three. I undid it, I get to restart. And the more our students understand these connections between numbers and between operations, the deeper their number sense knowledge is going to be, which is only going to help them out as they solve trickier and trickier problems later on. So sneaky tip number one is to explicitly tell your students that addition and subtraction can undo one another. They are related. Now there are three popular models to show this relationship between addition and subtraction. Um, there's probably more, but these are the three most popular ones that I'm used to seeing, and they are great models, so I'm gonna go over each of them, but I do caution you about using them, and I'll tell you why in a minute. The first model I see often is a classic fact family, often represented by a triangle, but oftentimes it looks like a house like this, where the three numbers are in the triangle at the top, and then all four of the uh, addition and subtraction problems go in the little house underneath it. The second model I see often is a number bond like this one where we have one larger circle uh, to show the sum or the total number and then we have the two add-ins. Of course when you are relating this to subtraction you can also show students that one is the menu end and then the other two are interchangeable as the subtrahend and the difference. And the third most common model I see for this is this right here. It is a simple part part whole whole diagram um, that's similar to a number bond where you have one side that is larger. Again, that could be the minuend or it could be the sum. And then the two smaller parts make up the whole. Now, a couple things about using those models. I already said they are great models. I teach all three models. I think it's a great way for students to see how these numbers connect. But the caution here is to make sure that you are really emphasizing less about the model and more about the relationship. For example, and I have fallen into this trap many times, when I have taught in the past uh, fact families, sometimes I will find myself basically teaching students how to complete the worksheet. And what I mean by that is I'm like, okay, here's the three numbers. We take the smaller two to get the larger one that's gonna be one addition problem. And then, all right, how do we get our other one? We just do a simple turnaround fact and we swip swap those add-ins, right? Now we need subtraction. We start with the larger number and then we take one of them, subtract it to get the difference, and then we can just swip swap those. And what I'm saying there is completely correct, but what I'm teaching them in this case is a procedure. I'm teaching them a procedure to take these three numbers and how to, you know, complete the fact family, how to make it work, but I'm not really emphasizing the connection these numbers have to one another. And this can be a pretty common downfall when students are completing these fact family type worksheets, right? They might learn pretty quickly how to complete these correctly, but are they really understanding the relationship between the numbers? In many of my math videos, I really like to talk about how to teach students math concepts conceptually instead of procedurally, because when we teach them a concept like this, like how these numbers are all related to another, how addition and subtraction can undo one another, um, it just sets them up 
much greater in the long run than just teaching a procedure. And just to clarify one more time, I am not saying at all to not use these models. These models are great. Uh, they've been around for a long time for a reason. Um, you just want to be careful when using them that you're, again, you're really highlighting the connection between the numbers, the relationship between them, and not just how to complete a number bond or how to complete a fact family or a part part whole diagram. Two ways to help yourself and your students with this is number one, through a math talk. Now I have done countless videos sharing about all sorts of different types of number talks, different number talk phrases you should use to really get the most out of your students, and different ideas for number talks. Here are some of those videos right here. But when you are teaching your students about fact families and the relationship amongst those numbers, be sure to really dive deep in your questioning. Ask your students to explain that connection between addition and subtraction. Ask them to explain how they know that they can just make a turnaround fact. Why does that work? Make sure you really dig deep and find out if your students are really understanding this concept instead of just understanding the procedure. And by checking in with them whole group, it might easily help you be able to identify a few students that you might need to pull back in small groups and go over this a little bit more with them. And secondly, to help reinforce these models, you'll want to use manipulatives. Now, any sort of math tool will really work. I particularly like using the yellow and red double-sided counters for these. Let me show you how I would do that. When teaching students about the relationship between numbers using manipulatives, like I said, I like to use these red and yellow reversible counters. Um, and I would start, you know, like this. I would just simply show a number here. I have the number seven. I would show a group of items, some red and some yellow. And I would ask students, what do we see here? I would leave it kind of open-ended like that because we don't know where our students are going to start. Some students might say they see seven counters and you say, great, and you can write seven on the board next to it. Or you could simply say it depends on where you're doing this. But some of your students might say, oh, I see four red counters. Okay, so we can start with four. What else do we see? We see three yellow counters. Okay, and then if I add them together, we have four and three, and what does that equal? It equals seven. Now I like this too because when you're teaching about this relationship, you're really teaching students about the commutative property. I can say, okay, what did I do here? And students will say, oh, well you switched them. Now we have three over here and we have four over here. Does that change anything about our total number? And they will recognize, no, we could have the three over here. We could have the three over here. It doesn't matter where our three and four are it still equals seven altogether. And to emphasize this, this is where I would go ahead and add our equations underneath that say three plus four equals seven, four plus three equals seven. Then using the same model, I would go ahead and say, okay, so we determined we have seven here. Now, what do we have? Students would recognize four. Well, how do you know? How many did I take away? Okay, so now we started with seven minus three equals four put them back. What if I'm okay back to seven? What if I take away these? What do we have now? Seven minus four now equals three and we can put them back together. This helps students see that these counters here that we can rearrange in any which way, they all relate to one another. We still have four, we still have three, but we can show addition and we can show subtraction with these same counters. Now, once students are familiar with this and they can see and physically move this relationship, um, sometimes I like to do this and give my students their own counters and have them show me what I'm doing under the dot cam too. That way they're physically, you know, removing and adding things themselves. But then I say, okay, take two of your red counters and flip them to yellow. Now what? Students will recognize again, decomposition. We still have seven. I didn't add any, I didn't take any away. All I did was change up the way the seven is made. And now again, we have a new fact family we can make. Two plus five equals seven. Five plus two, seven minus five, seven minus two, et cetera. Now I love using math tools like this because students can actually put them together, they can remove them, they can really kind of feel and see that relationship. But another math tool I love for teaching this skill, or at least to practice the skill I should say, are dominoes. And dominoes are great here because they can really see the relationship between these numbers. I can see that we have a five and a three. If I add five plus three together, we have eight. If I add three and five together, we have eight. 
If I have eight and take away three, we have five. If I have eight and take away five, we have three. It's just another visual way for students to see those number relationships. So in practicing this, I could easily just get a little box of dominoes like I have here, these little colored ones, and all you really need is a whiteboard, and students could be tasked to flip a domino and share the relationship between those numbers. And I like to say, again, the relationship between those numbers instead of complete the fact family, because really what we're talking about here is that relationship and not how to complete a fact family. So sometimes even just a little wording switch can really help. Now for some more practice with number bonds and fact families, I actually have an entire freebie. It looks like this over on TPT. Um, again, it is all free. It comes with a number bond mat for your students to have. We have roll a bond where they will go ahead and roll two dice. Um, sometimes they are tasked to find the sum. Other times they are tasked to put the larger number over in the bigger part and find the difference. Again, what I like about that is it's really showing how a number bond can show addition and subtraction. It's showing the relationship between the numbers. Also included in this freebie are a bunch of word problems where you could read them aloud to your students and they would have to fill in the number bond to show what is happening in the problem. And again, it's great because some are showing addition and some are showing subtraction. So the way they fill in that number bond is going to look a little bit different. Now, some of these problems might have more difficult numbers um, that your students might not be ready for, depending on if you're doing this in first or second grade, but the problems can be the same. I would just lower those numbers for your students as needed. There are also two different fact family type activities that are a little bit different than your typical just fill in the fact family. And there's also a which sign worksheet, which I love because students have to, again, look at the relationship between the numbers and where the equal sign is to determine if this is an addition or a subtraction problem. And then they decide, do they put a plus or a minus in the box? Like I said, that entire mini unit there is completely free. So I will go ahead and link that down in the description so you can grab it. All right, and one last strategy I have for teaching students the relationship between addition and subtraction is to give them similar story problems. And this is what I mean by that. I might on the board have one story problem that says something like, there were five blackbirds sitting on a tree, two more came and joined them. How many blackbirds are there now? So there we have an addition joining problem. Now over here, right next to it, I would have another story problem that says something like, there were seven blackbirds sitting on a tree. Two of them flew away. How many blackbirds were left? Now by doing this with your students, they'll start to realize, hey, wait a sec, we have two plus five over here equals seven. That's how many there were. And now we have seven over here. Wait, we know five are leaving. Hmm, what do we realize here? What do we notice about these equations? What do we notice about the relationship between these numbers? This is where your student's number sense is going to develop even more and they're gonna to start to realize these problems have the same numbers, but they're slightly different. What's different about them? What's the same about them? And then they're going to be able to take that with more practice and recognize, hey, if I can solve two plus five equals seven, I can solve seven minus five equals two or seven minus two equals five, whatever it ends up being. They can start to realize how they can take their addition knowledge or their subtraction knowledge and use it to solve the inverse operation. Now it's not something that happens overnight. Of course, it's something that develops and gets stronger and stronger as you continue to use these strategies with your students. All right, so just to quickly recap, the three main strategies are number one, to explicitly teach your students about the relationship between addition and subtraction, specifically that they can undo one another. Tip number two is to use models, but be sure to teach the concept and not just the procedure. And step three is to use similar story problems. Problems. This way students can really dissect each and start using their knowledge of one operation to solve the opposite operation. I do hope this video helped you. Like I said, I know in the past when I was teaching first grade, I would definitely get caught up in teaching the procedure of how to make a fact family. And I don't know that I necessarily stretched that knowledge a little further uh, to really kind of deepen it, right? So if that's you, there's no shame in the game. We, you know, we only know what we know. So now as I learn more, I wanna take that knowledge and apply it with my students. So if you have other great ideas for teaching this tricky topic, go ahead and drop them down in the comments below. Or if there was an idea that you really liked from here, let me know about it in the comments. Don't forget to grab that number bond freebie I have for you. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell.
That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.